Controlling smart home devices with your iPhone or iPad is far from a new concept, but in iOS 10, Apple is lending much more focus to home automation. It's all thanks to the brand new built-in home app that ships with iOS 10 and watchOS 3. The new Home app is a centralized hub for managing Apple HomeKit-enabled devices. These are devices that have been specifically certified by Apple to work seamlessly. Now, in previous versions of iOS, users had to rely on third-party HomeKit apps in order to manage their devices, but in iOS 10, it can all be managed from the stock Home app that appears on your home screen by default. Now, before you begin, you're going to need at least one HomeKit-enabled product, and for this particular demonstration, I am using the Philips Hue Starter Kit. The Philips Hue Starter Kit can be purchased for about 70 bucks and it's a great first home kit accessory. Once you've acquired your first home kit device, simply launch the home app and tap get started. By default, you'll see a new My Home screen that allows you to start building your connected home by adding things like lights, locks, thermostats, etc. You can also customize the name of your home, change its background wallpaper, and much, much more. If you want to learn all those little minute details, then make sure you head over to 9to5Mac where we walk through the entire process. But before you get into customization, however, you should add your first HomeKit enabled accessory. Tap the Add Accessory button, and then the Home app will scan your home network in an effort to find any HomeKit enabled device. Devices. So before we do that, that means we need to connect our Philips Hue and it's really easy. It comes with the bridge. You connect that to your router. You connect the lights to the particular lights that you want to use and you're pretty much done. Now there are some additional setup steps that you'll have to take with the Philips Hue because the lights are separate from the bridge itself. So you'll need to make sure that the bridge can see the lights. So with this in mind, we'll need to utilize the Philips Hue app to complete the installation. But once the installation is completed, you can fully rely on the home app to control your lighting. Now there is a basic hierarchy when it comes to using the home app. Keeping this hierarchy in mind will make it much easier to understand how the app functions. So at the very top, there's home. Below that, there are rooms. Below that, there are accessories. So basically, you will need at least one room in your home and you will need at least one accessory in a room within a home. Pretty simple, straightforward, right? There's also groups, scenes, and automation, but you can learn more about that over at 9to5Mac. There you'll find a full post that breaks down the entirety of the home app. We'll walk you through it step by step, getting all the little details sorted out. Now, once an accessory is configured, a room is added by default. So like the home tab, the room tab can be customized and like homes, multiple rooms can be added. Yes, you can have multiple homes, you can have multiple rooms. Now a room should correspond to an actual place in your house or on your property. For example, if I have a Philips Hue light installed in my office, it would be wise for me to create a separate room called office, right? Makes sense. Now inside those rooms, you're gonna have all of your accessories. And to get the most out of the home app, it's important to organize your accessories in a way that makes sense. Now in most cases, you'll wanna create separate rooms for each physical location on your property, like we mentioned, but you'll also wanna make sure that you give your accessories a name and make it easy to identify. So to modify an accessory, you can just simply long press on the accessory tile that appears within a room and tap the details button at the bottom of the screen. From the accessory customization screen, you can choose a new icon for that accessory you can rename your accessories, set its location, include it in favorites, include it in the status page on the main home tab. And from here, you can also group accessories with other HomeKit enabled devices. Once an accessory is grouped, it is basically treated as a singular device. So just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about controlling accessories because really that's the whole point of all of this. Accessories can be controlled in one or more of the following ways. Via the home app on your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod touch, or your Apple watch. From the home section of Control Center on your iPhone, your iPad, or your iPod Touch. Using 3D Touch quick actions on the Home App icon for 3D Touch enabled devices like the iPhone 6S or the iPhone 7. Using Siri on an iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Apple Watch, or Apple TV. And finally, by using automation via the Home App, which requires an always own iPad or an Apple TV at your home location. And if you have an Apple TV or an always own iPad, you'll be able to control your HomeKit enabled accessories even when you're away from home because the iPad or your Apple TV acts like a centralized hub for receiving commands and then passing those commands on to your HomeKit enabled devices. So ladies and gentlemen, while it's true that HomeKit has existed for a while now, in iOS 10, it really starts to come to life because you have that built-in stock home app that can be controlled in a variety of ways. 
and it's extremely exciting because there's tons of new HomeKit enabled accessories. We'll have a list of some of those accessories in our post over at 9to5Mac. Check out the link down below in the description and let me know what you guys think. If you appreciated this video, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you go ahead and do that and let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.